what's up and welcome back to the Mama's Review. So today I thought I would talk about what we did for my son for sleep training. I know that that's a controversial topic and so I wanted to tell you kind of what worked for us. Let's get started. So the very first thing that I want to say is I do not care if you sleep train your child or you don't sleep train your child. I don't care if you follow the method I follow or choose a different method to follow. I think so many times we bash each other as moms and as a new mom there is so much of that like oh you should be doing this or you should be doing that and I struggled a long time with whether or not I should or should not sleep train Jacob and at the end of the day I do not care what anybody thinks I know what worked for us and I love that I did it but I also understand people that chose not to do it I think you know your child more than anybody else and I think you know what you're capable of more than anybody else so do what works for you and forget about what everybody else thinks and says because really at the end of the day it's important what works for your family and that's it so when we were looking at sleep training my son I really struggled with letting him cry or not cry and we looked at a few different methods and the Ferber method was the one that we kind of fell upon now I want to explain what the Ferber method is before I really get into how we implemented it into his sleeping and you know know if it worked and all that sort of stuff for him. So if you don't know the Ferber method is a controlled cried out sleep solution. So um, I would recommend that whether you're starting this type of sleep training or any type of sleep training you stick with it for at least a week. I think it takes about three or four days for your baby to build a routine and it's also going to help you figure out your baby's cues and all of that sort of stuff and what you're comfortable with and not comfortable with. So if you pick a certain sleep training method try to stick with that method for a week before you choose to switch. It's just going to help the process be that much easier. So the Ferber method what you do is you're going to lay your child down in their crib awake so that's for nap times and night times and all that sort of stuff. I implemented it all at the same time. I don't know whether or not you're supposed to start with naps and then work it into sleep. I don't know. When we did the Ferber method, we started at the top and we just solid for his naps, for sleep time, for everything. We totally transitioned him over. The other thing that I will say is that you shouldn't really start sleep training your child until about four or five months. Jacob was about four and a half months. You really got to make sure, especially in those first three months, that you're hearing your baby's cues. They should not be sleeping through the night yet. If they are, that's awesome. Some babies do and that's great. But if it's a baby that's still waking up to feed, you need to be able to hear those cues and feed that baby. So make sure that you're starting at a time that's, you know, really a good time to start. You don't want to start too early and really honestly, you don't want to start really past six months. If you've missed the mark, I mean, you can still try. It's just going to be a lot harder for you to try to implement it. So like I said, you lay your baby down in the crib wide awake then you say one little command to them um, whether that's night night I love you or whatever your command would be so then you walk out you shut the door or turn on the sound machine or turn on his night light or whatever you need to do for your baby that's normal to their nighttime routine or bedtime routine you go ahead and do those things and then you leave so what you're supposed to do then is you're supposed to wait five minutes before you go back in so almost guaranteed your baby is going to cry. They are not going to be happy about it because it's not normal for them. It's something that's totally new and they need to get used to it. So listen for that cry and try to discern what kind of cry it is. Are they frustrated? Are they mad? Are they um, scared? What kind of cry are they giving off? Because that's going to be a good indication for you on how to proceed. So um, if they're having like a really big meltdown cry, I would suggest you go in a little bit sooner. Um, if they are, you know, having like a panic attack cry, all that sort of stuff, like you're gonna have to read your own baby's cry. That's gonna help you, like I said, discern whether or not you should go in sooner or later or whatever. So Jacob did really, really well. The reason we started to sleep train him is because of the fact that when I was rocking him or nursing him to bed, he started to get really frustrated with me trying to rock him to bed. He would push off me, he would scream, he would be upset. And so I would, you know, sit there or whatever for 15, 20 minutes rocking him while he pushed and screamed and was mad and angry till he finally got exhausted enough that he would fall asleep. And so I just sort of thought, I'm done. I need to, I need to not be doing this every night, every nap. It's just, it's mentally exhausting. It's emotionally exhausting and it's physically exhausting. So that's why we started to lay him in his crib. 
He, you know, if he's gonna scream on me, why not try to implement that into sleep training was my thought. So, like I said, you lay them down, you walk out, you wait five minutes, then you go back in, um, you give them a little snuggle, tell them, you know, your, your same command, whatever you say before they go to night, then you lay them back down, then you walk out, you wait 10 minutes, then you go back in if they're still crying, you pick them up, you give them a cuddle, you say your command, you walk out, you wait 15 minutes, then you walk in, do your same sort of stuff, and you wait another 15 minutes until they fall asleep. Now, I have heard stories of people saying, I did that over and over and over and over and over again until like they fell asleep and it took two hours. Yikes, <laughs> to me that seems exhausting. Jacob did not take that long, but I, I really read his cue that he was ready to fall asleep. So, like I said, I would place him in there, I'd walk out. I think the first night that we did it, it was half an hour in total, and it wasn't full blown scream cry the whole time. Um, that's something I was not comfortable with, so if he got to a panicked level, I was back in there way quicker than the 15 minutes or 10 minutes or whatever it was. And when I started, I started at five minutes, then I did about 10, then 10, 10, 10. I didn't really go to the 15 and sit at 15 and go. I just couldn't do it. I thought 10 minutes was long enough and I wanted to go in and just check on him. One, we don't have a video monitor, and two, I wanted to make sure he was totally okay and fine and knew that I was still there. So it took maybe two days of Jacob doing that. The first night it was half an hour and the second night it was like 15 minutes. And ever since then he has gone down. I lay him in bed, he doesn't cry a peep. He takes a soother, puts it in his mouth or whatever, grabs his teddy bear, cuddles up and goes to bed. He never has an issue. I mean, he's had issues when he's like teething and stuff like that where it takes him a little bit, but nothing compared to what it used to be. And it has seriously changed his sleep habits a ton. He still wasn't sleeping through the night. One thing that I struggled with him with sleep training was what do you do when the baby wakes up in the middle of the night? So now, you know, it's the middle of the night. We even tried to do the Ferber method st type stuff in the middle of the night and it just, it really didn't work. Um, I didn't know when he needed to eat and when he didn't need to eat and I set limits for myself like, okay, he probably doesn't need, need to eat unless it's, you know, been four hours. So I'm not gonna go in there before the four hour period. But he's screaming and screaming and screaming and I just wanted to just put him back to sleep. And so for the, you know, next few months after that, we really struggled with figuring that out. And I think that part of it for us really started to develop and come into play once I started to actually night wean him. So I think that sleep training and night weaning should kind of go hand in hand, but you've really got to read your baby's cues. You got to be very careful that they're actually not hungry. Um, and I will do a video on night weaning if you guys want as well, kind of what we did to night wean my son completely, because that was again, something that was a bit more tricky for me to understand and figure out how to do and read his cues and all of that sort of stuff. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it made sense. It was a little bit rambly and all over the place because that's how my videos normally are. <laughs> And um, anyway guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Comment down below and let me know if you want to, you know, hear about my uh, weaning process with my son. And yeah, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already and follow along. Thanks so much guys and have a great day. Bye.